Welcome to Sustain This, a podcast where we discuss mindful consumption, personal style, and the quest for living a more intentional life. I'm Alyssa, a sustainable stylist. And I'm Christina, a shopaholic turned minimalist-ish. And I'm Sina, a color consultant and slow fashion style coach. Together, we will unpack the nuances of what it really means to be a conscious consumer and find more joy in what we have right now. So grab your tea, your coffee, or whatever floats your boat and join us in the conversation. Let's go. Yay. 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 (laughs) Welcome back, everyone, to the podcast. Um, Today, we are talking about how to repeat outfits without getting bored. And um, it's something that we've talked about before. Like, we've talked about how to, to, like, you know, recreate street style or, like, shop your closet. So... Yeah, today we're going to talk a little bit more about how like you prevent yourself from getting bored with doing that. So I found an article from Refinery29, and I'm just going to read a quote from that article. And we're going to link it in the show notes as well. As well. It's a really, a really good, um, interesting article. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a, a longer quote here. So uh, just bear with me on that one. So it says somewhere in between learning how to dress without our parents help and having to dress for several occasions and versions of ourselves as adults, we were made to believe that it's a taboo to wear the same outfit more than a few times. If you're a woman, that belief was magnified thanks to society's emphasis on women's appearances and the impossible to meet pressure to maintain a constantly changing looks. And then it highlights uh, some different TV shows like uh, Carrie Bradshaw from Sex and the City, Emily in Paris, um, like they're the characters of those. Uh, And we're constantly confronted with this unattainable image of the successful woman who is rarely ever seen in the same outfit twice. I think it's it's kind of interesting uh, to just like, you know, get a little bit more background knowledge about where that that came from, that stigma of of wearing the same thing twice, which for us people like living in the within the Western culture is definitely more of a a privilege. Like, um, but it's it's still pressure that we all experience I think it's um especially on social media it's like there's been this like if I've already showed it once in the feed I can never wear the same outfit again because you know I need to showcase new things all the time how do you guys like prevent yourself from getting bored like wearing the same outfits over and over again are there any things that you like secret styling (laughs) tips or anything you'd like to share for me it was all it all came down to finding my style uniform. So I used to think that, you know, I wanted to do the whole Steve Jobs thing where you just wear the black tee, the black turtleneck and jeans. And, you know, then I could be that kind of outfit repeater and not have to think about it. But I found that that really wasn't me. I like clothes. I like variety. And I think that's okay to have within your wardrobe, within your style. So what really helped me narrow down how to repeat outfits without getting bored was in the sense of finding the outfit formula that I know I feel good in. And it allowed me to have variety in my pieces, but it's still essentially wearing the same outfit. So my style uniform is all separates. It's essentially like I always have some kind of layering piece, whether it be usually a blazer, but some kind of jacket a tank top or a t-shirt, and then a pair of pants. So they could be jeans, trousers, sweatpants, whatever it is. But the formula is always the same where the pieces are different. And then that allows me to mix and match and create new outfits, but that still feel true to myself and I still feel great in um, without necessarily just doing the exact same outfit every time. So it's a different version of outfit repeating Uh, But essentially, I think it really kind of comes back down to that similar value because you just have, you have your go-tos and you rock it all the time. Mm. Yeah, I think you pretty much just described why it's so amazing to have an outfit (coughs) formula or or figure out what your outfit (laughs) uniform is. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's, uh, I think for someone who's not necessarily used to styling their clothing or like, you know, a lot of people feel very restricted and very specific outfits. Mm -hmm. I think it's a nice way to like learn really easily to explore like another dimension of your style and to, to really explore like mixing and matching. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think for me, it's about, I feel so repetitive, but it's just about changing, like looking at everything from a perspective of elements of style. So no longer seeing your clothes as like the garment itself. Although I do, I love an outfit formula. Like I use that as well often. So you kind of go between the two. But I think um, seeing your clothes in terms of silhouette, colors, vibes, um, like for example, I saw, I don't know, Sina, if you were going to touch on this, but I, I saw in the article um, the point where, you know, like a lot of times there are clothes in our closet that are either aspirational or clothes in our closet that suited a, a past life that like mm. we don't really use anymore and we don't really resonate with it anymore. And I, I fully understand this and I will declutter clothes or get tired of clothes for that exact reason but something that I think helps me repeat them with a bit more joy is um again seeing it from that element of style perspective so like I have a pencil skirt from like my university business case competition days that I still wear because it's just like it's clean it's sharp it's crisp so I'll pair it with something like fluffy on top or like really sexy and feminine. And and it's no longer like that pencil skirt that I've had for 15 years. It's a contrasting silhouette to a fluffy top, you know? Mm. So yeah, um, I like that. Y- you know what I mean? So it, it, yeah. it, it changes your garments from being something old to a paintbrush yeah. or something, you know? That's like great. A, something you can change. So, you know, what that. do you do? Yeah, um, yeah, it's a, kind of a similar thing, I would say. Um, like, I do the outfits formula a lot, too. I really love your approach, too, Alyssa. I think I might, you know, I haven't really, I, I've never really thought about, like, taking the age of the piece out of the equation and just looking at the piece for what it is. I think that's a really good mm. approach. Um, but, yeah, I like, for me, it's about, like, for example, now it's it's autumn and it's like my go-to formula is a pair of jeans and a sweater. Like that's what I wear all the time. Um, a pair of sneakers is also what I, I tend to reach for. So it's about like, okay, well, sweater, jeans, sneakers, like what is, can I change one of those elements tomorrow? Like maybe just wear a pair of boots instead. Then I have a new outfit, but it's still the same kind of like what you said, Christina. So the, I feel like the outfit formula solution is really what is helping me wear my clothing because it doesn't necessarily have to be like for me to be an outfit repeater it doesn't have to be the exact same outfit mm-hmm. every day like it can be versions of that same outfit um yeah and then i feel like um yeah i don't know like the the changing out like one thing and like contrast dressing like uh alison bornstein talks a lot about the the wrong shoe theory mm-hmm. to those of you who don't know it i it's love that kind of, yeah, it's really it's a really yeah. great trick. And I feel like it doesn't have to be restricted to shoes. Like I, f- I feel like contrast dressing generally, like mm-hmm. putting on a, a, a basic outfit or like an outfit you love wearing and then adding an unexpected piece or something that you feel like this shouldn't technically go with this outfit is also a really, really fun way to practice outfit repeating um, and to create new new outfits. Um and I feel like we talk a lot about like looking outwards for inspiration, like um, street style inspiration and stuff like that. It's of, often like highlighted as one of the best ways of like uh, shopping your wardrobe. And I, I just love it. Like it's it's one of my favorite ways to shop my own wardrobe. But I think we like there are other approaches that kind of teaches you to look more inward so that you still have your own like so that you teach yourself to put your own twist on things and not just copy paste everything you see around you. I think it's Mm -hmm. um, crucial in in our day and age to like learn to develop your own sense of style and not always just look outwards for inspiration. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think what it does too is it helps you um, kind of get out of the same outfit rut because I find, I don't know, let me know if you guys ever do this but you kind of come up with an outfit that you like and you're reaching for it literally every single day like exact shirt exact top exact shoes and it's so easy and it feels great but um I think what shopping your closet and the elements of style and using 
contrast and friction antonyms in your outfit combination. Like I think it teaches you to, it teaches you how to style your clothes and how to repeat outfits in a way that doesn't always feel the same. So it still feels fresh and like it teaches you, you know, to like, how, how do I hack this button up so that it, you know, it's still a, a plain white button up, but, you know, maybe I can twist it here or roll up the sleeve or do up the whole butt, the whole mm. collar. Like even just learning how to play within the same piece that you wear all the time in a different way, I think it just builds the muscle of styling and that creativity within that piece, which I feel like, you know, sometimes when I've, and I've experienced this, like when I buy something, I'm like, oh, I can wear it in these like three different ways. But I really, I find oftentimes I really only wear it in one way. Um, And it become, it can become very like, you know, one note and just a little bit boring sometimes. So I feel like just learning how to style a piece within itself differently is a great way to just have everything feel fresh. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I think silhouette also plays a really big difference. Like I think if you are finding something that's feeling a little stale, I think changing up a silhouette can be such a simple or just a a different element that can totally change the vibe of an outfit. Like I love the unexpected. Same same with you, Sina. I think you can do as long as there's like an any unexpected part of the outfit I think it can be really cool but I think changing the silhouette is a really good way to keep things feeling fresh and I think we also can't have this conversation without talking about the privilege of time Mm -hmm. because it takes time to like do those little tweaks and I always find my most interesting outfit combinations come out of when I've taken time to just trial and error and like I'm trying an outfit or I'm trying to put something together and it's like you try this no you try this no and then you end up coming out with something really good so I think which I know we don't all have time Mm. um that's why I think it is a privilege but it is um rather than buying something try buying yourself some time yeah and I guarantee you time and energy I think tweet that yeah Because I remember an article and I think there's been several articles written since. And I think I even made it like a video, which was a spin on that article, which was called Why Successful People Always Wear the Same. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember the I can't remember where the original article was from. I'll definitely see if I can if I can find it so we can link it. But it was like an article that talked about like Steve Jobs, as you say, Christina, like why he always wore the same like outfit and like like some people that and I know success is like a you can like discuss what success really looks like but why certain people wear the same thing all over over and over again it's because they don't want to be like the whole decision fatigue that you might be experiencing if you have a lot of choices in your work or like just like yeah I don't know it's I think it's about finding what works for you because again, outfit repeating doesn't have have to necessarily mean wearing the exact same outfit every single day. Mm-hmm. But, but also I, I think it's okay if you do. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it's like about figuring out what, because that then that also becomes a powerful outfit, right? If it allows mm-hmm. you to do what you want to do really good, then that's also a, a powerful outfit. And that's why, that's the whole point of like in clothes cognition which we've talked about before as well like that what we wear has the power to either boost our mood and make us really productive or it will have the opposite effect so whatever that outfit might look like I think it's about finding a way to that and if it's the same thing every day then great but if it's like making little tweaks then yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so in the same article that we just mentioned before from Refinery29, there's a, um, a few, like there's some other key like takeaways. So we've mentioned the fashion psychologist like Shakela Forbes-Bell before. She has an amazing Instagram, which I definitely, or I think we all definitely recommend like following. So she says that clothing can be parted in three usage categories. So there's continuing identity as the first one, which is a reflection of who you currently are. And then there's transitional identity, which can function as a bridge between you and then who you want to be. 
And then there's discontinued identity, which are things that no longer work for your identity or your lifestyle. Um, so yeah, it's just to say that it's it's like, I don't know, sometimes we, I think if we struggle wearing with wearing a certain piece from our wardrobe, I think it's very valid that it's it could be because it's just not suitable for our identity or our, our lives anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also important to be aware that sometimes trends can kind of falsely deem certain clothes unwearable. Um, yeah. yeah. That's such yeah, it's a just great a really point. good article. I just I just felt that it was uh, it was worth mentioning mentioning that uh, takeaway from the article as well. That's such a great point, though. Like I never thought about how trends impact the way we see our current closet. I always just look at trends and be like, okay, is this something I want to add or not? But you're that point of of like, you know, when you pay attention to trends, it does make you feel like your closet is less than, mm -hmm. and maybe it pushes some items out unnecessarily when they could have stayed in there. So Yeah. Yeah. I think what you said, Alyssa, about like looking at the piece for what it is more mm. than, is this a trendy piece or like looking yeah. at it as how can you use it like to create a certain look yeah. instead. Um, I think that's a really helpful way of like, that's a really helpful mm. mindset, I think, to practice. I just sure. think that outfit repeating in general too helps you figure out, it just helps you know what you like, you know? Totally. Um, you and I like repetition is kind of the key to to learning and figuring all that out. So the only way that you know you're gonna like, I mean, you can put something on your body and just like it can click and it can be amazing right away. But I I really do think that the key to knowing what you like, how things fit, colors, silhouettes, all of that stuff comes from repeatedly wearing and making mm -hmm. small tweaks small adjustments and refining over time so mm. it's kind of like a it's like the process of habit building I think and just yeah. being consistent within that and at least for me I found it was really hard to do when I was bringing in new clothes every week that I had to figure out how to style and the thing is with that too is like when I was bringing in new stuff every single week I would tell myself, it's like, oh, I can wear it all these different ways and I'm checking all these boxes. But like when new stuff is constantly finding its way in, it's really, I find it can be difficult to learn how to integrate that within your wardrobe because you just don't give yourself the time to even use it or style it because something new is coming in already that you're still telling yourself you're going to style. Mm -hmm. when now you have like a backlog of things that still need their chance. So yeah. I feel like outfit repeating too is a great um, experiment and something to commit to, to even just help you slow down your shopping because it's a way to give your clothes the chance that we said we were going to give them when we bought it in the first place. Mm. And I find just when things are trickling in, it's like you don't, there's no time for that. Yeah, exactly. You only have so <laughs> much time. Like, you only have so many days in the week. Like, yeah. And even like, I really love how you said it because it's, you have all the best intention and intentions and you have all of these outfit ideas and it might be a really good match with your wardrobe, but is that equal to having to buy it? Like, is it mm -hmm. realistic? Like realistically, will you have time and days enough in your week to actually be able to wear it as much as you're saying you're going to? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. in many cases it's yeah you probably you won't have enough time or like no. that's such a great point Christine yeah. I love that again it it really comes down to space like give yourself space like why yeah. do we always have to have so much why mm. do we always have to be in a hurry why do we mm. always have to look like I I get it to a certain point like yes we want to feel our best and look a hundred percent but like why can't we just chill, you know, like mm. wear the same thing over and over that, like you said. And then I think it helps you develop a signature. Like what a power Absolutely. move, like to have a yeah. signature style. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. yes, I wear this blazer twice a week. Like, what's your problem? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, and the thing is like, no one, no one, no one's looking as much as you think they are. No. Mm, the spotlight spotlight effect. People yeah. probably don't remember what you wore yesterday anyway. No. So 
just wear the same thing again today. Yeah. Fully. Yeah. Can we talk yeah. about the spotlight effect? I think it's like such an important psychological thing. If, yeah, please. If people please are familiar expand. with Go it. For it. No, well, I just I could be getting it wrong, but the spotlight effect is this like it's a psycholo it's like practiced or it's been in what am i looking for god the word i'm looking for it's a, yeah it's slept. like a, it's psychology and it's been proven we it's, yeah we center ourselves but no one's really think, exactly we think people are paying more attention to us than they actually are because mm. everyone is already so into themselves that no one's actually paying you that much attention yeah. so wear what you want you know yeah yeah exactly that makes that's a great point because it's like wear the thing for you more than you wear it for your surroundings mm. like it's more important how you feel when you wear the piece yeah. yeah yeah and I think that's where you know like we often talk about personal style and all that it really does come back down to a feeling like feeling and function right um if you feel good yeah. in what you're wearing then cares <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah but I think I think that's such a great point that's like going to be my key takeaway is the like how can you appreciate what you have and how can you have fun with it and play with it and give it the creativity that it deserves when you're constantly bringing new things yeah. in like you mm -hmm. can't even appreciate it you're not even giving yourself a second yeah I think that's... my key takeaway is really coming back to how you separate the age of the item from mm. its function yeah. and its purpose because I think it does like if I pull out a blazer and be like ugh this old thing I've had it for five years and it it for me when I say that to myself within my like within my head as I'm getting dressed it kind of bums me out like it makes the whole process a bummer so it's really you know what feeling is this thing going to invoke what role what what how what tool is this acting as within my wardrobe within the outfit that I'm putting mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and that's when it becomes more fun again yeah because it's kind of funny mm -hmm. I think about like it's almost like a flex to have something really old in your wardrobe but then at the Fully. same time when we when we pull it out and then we and then we give it this negative connotation of like oh this is this old thing so it's I find that mm -hmm. very an, an interesting paradox like do we want it or do we not? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So I think changing that, changing the perspective and framing it as, oh, I've had this for 10 years and I still love it. And this is what it's going to do for me as opposed to calling it, oh, I've, I've had this old thing for 10 years is hmm. to me, that's like a game changer. Mm. Yeah. The reframing. Yeah. It's like you have to reframe your mindset. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the headline was repeat outfits without getting bored. Like, because sometimes I have clients where they are repeating the same outfits over and over again, but they aren't making them feel great. Mm. So I think it's, you know, outfit repeating is great for anyone, I think. But if it's not feeling great, then you definitely need to figure out why. Like, what is it about? I think you can analyze, like the outfits that you're reaching for over and over again and figure out like if it's a good thing like what is it that is working about this uh outfit formula whatever it might be and then build on from there and if it's making you feel bad then figure out why it's making you feel bad mm -hmm. like what what is it you're feeling because sometimes you can repeat outfits and then you yeah you, you just feel low like you, you, you don't feel like your yeah. best self or like this you just reach for it because that's easier yeah. And I feel like sometimes you need to kind of figure out, like, go beyond that and figure out, like, why? Yeah. Why mm -hmm. is not working for you? Like, why are you reaching yeah. for this outfit if it's not making you feel great? And what when could you very... do? Yeah. What could you do to upgrade it? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. It's when it's that's when, like, yeah, the style rut. So, what would yeah? Mm -hmm. What kind of solutions do you offer your clients when that's the? Complaint? I mean, I often, I often because often it's people who are like. Um, they reach for, for example, like what we call off-duty looks or, you know, kind of like a working from home kind of looks. Uh, you're not really going out. Like maybe the only outing you'll have today is like going on a school run or whatever it might be. So it can often it's like very low-key casual outfits. So I feel like the easiest way is to like, because something about those outfits is definitely working. That's why you're reaching for them. So that could be comfort. Mm -hmm. Um, so how can you work with that as sort of a, a positive thing about that way of dressing and how can you then easy, like simply upgrade the look? So I often 
you know, recommend people to start with their off-duty looks or their like casual looks and then build on to those. That's like a really simple place to start, I feel. Like how can you upgrade your weekend uniform? Um, like if if you have three weekend looks that you tend to wear over and over again, how can you upgrade them? Can it be like adding an unexpected piece or maybe bringing in a pop of color or uh i don't know adding like a con like if it's a really casual uh, let's say leggings and a sweater like can you wear a more fancy jacket with that outfit to make like instead of always just reaching for the same old worn out raincoat like mm -hmm. so to just make like small tweaks like that to upgrade your kind of off-duty looks i feel like that's a really simple way to get started especially if you don't have a lot of time or you don't have um a lot of knowledge about styling your clothes um, so that's usually like what I would recommend. I also find for those clients too, Sina, I don't know if you find it's, it can also be a matter of like using the difficulty, like it's kind of jumping off on your point of like, okay, like what is it you like about it? Is it the comfort? And then I often find, cause these looks are so, the off duty looks are so simple. It's like a sweater and jeans, but then how do you make it feel like, okay, if this is your everyday walking around, like how do you make it feel more lived in? So I always find it's like the biggest revelation comes from pushing up the sleeves, throwing in, like if you're wearing boots, like tucking in the cuff of your jeans or whatever, like half into the boot. So it feels mm. a little like fussed, but not. And it's yeah. like, make it look give it a little bit of that intentionality yeah because you, during the day you end up doing this anyway you end up like fixing it da, da, da. and I yeah. think there's nothing like you know like there, there's nothing wrong with your everyday like look just give it a little zhuzh and yeah, like true yes yeah. but but the upgrade also it's like or can you add like the accessory or whatever like the unexpected piece I think yeah is so yeah because key. I think a lot of people are afraid to ruin their clothes. Like, we, yeah. again, just to, I think we've like talked about like celebrating our wardrobes more because yes. like you said, Christina, we, you bought the piece. Mm -hmm. Like, why aren't you wearing it? It's such a shame and you deserve yeah. to wear it. Like it's, we're, like sometimes we get stuck in the rut because we're saving it for perfect occasion, Yes, which yeah. might never come around. So it's like, just, just wear the piece. And yeah. like, again, it's, it's far worse having bought it and never wearing it than getting a small stain like the stain can be removed Fully. possibly yeah 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 100%. And, I, and I fall victim for for, for doing that too because I'm a mom <laughs> like I don't I want to preserve my nicer looking clothes yes. too but yeah. it's I'm not saying that people should be like uh, uh precious yeah it's it's you know definitely preserve your nicer looking clothes but also wear your clothes mm -hmm. yeah that's the yeah. key you want um I I've find I notice I do that quite a lot. Like for example, I went um, to see my family this weekend and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to see my family. So I'll just wear leggings. But so it's kind of like, you're, yeah, as you say, like you're waiting for these opportunities to wear these clothes. And then either when that opportunity comes, I find I like kind of justify my way out of wearing something sometimes, or it's about creating any opportunity to wear the clothes like so what so what if I'm just like going home for the weekend yeah true yeah mm. this is yeah, I where did the I same can wear this it. weekend yeah you know we went away for like the to the countryside and I wore all of my favorite jewelry I woke up nice. in the morning I, I put on makeup and I dipped my hair because I was like who cares like if they say where are you going like looking like that it's like it's for me it's not for you guys it's for me yeah yeah totally yeah, well done, both of you, for doing that this weekend. Because, <laughs> like, and the other thing, too, is, like, where where do we really go in the day? Like, if you audit your week. So I have this, um, I have a free Notion template that I created to help you find your style uniform. And it sort of takes you through your week where mm. you, you know, not only do you audit what you're wearing and how you felt in it, but you're audit, you audit where you're going. So if... Mm if the main time you, if you work from home and then the main time you leave the house is to go pick up the kids or go out, so go out for a coffee. Yes. That seems like mundane and not really a chance to, to wear what you want to feel good in, but like, where else are we going that day? True. And if that's yeah, only, point. if that's your only chance, like then that's the time there's no black tie event or 
gala that, you know, necessitates that will allow you to wear this. So, you know, maybe, yeah, go, you know, I'm not saying go to the, go to the coffee shop in a ball gown, but if there's like a really great pair of trousers or like this really cool necklace that you're saving, mm. you know, why wait years for that opportunity to come up when you can take that chance now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wore a pair of heeled boots to the grocery store the other day. I felt oh. great. <laughs> yeah. I was like walking around, like click clacking with my yeah. shopping cart, and I felt yeah. great. I was like, who knows? Maybe I'll meet some guy beside the Pablo yeah. Moose, you know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <Beside the Pablo. laughs> I'm just kidding. But it was it was nice though to like yeah. feel I good. Totally and do I remember, that too. you know, and like in Italy, I would do that all the time. I remember I would get so dressed up. Or Croatia, like just to go to the pharmacy or go to the grocery yeah. store and everyone looked great. So yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's also like it's a celebration of your wardrobe, but it's also yes. maybe like a celebration of life. It's like, OK, mm-hmm. it's even mm-hmm. like the mundane things. It's worth it, like getting dressed up for like yes. I'm showing up. <gasps> oh, for it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. I love that. And you know what? Actually, in, in yesterday's, in, in Saturday's SYC event, I actually wrote it down. I hope she doesn't mind me quoting this. I won't say her last name in case she wants to stay private. But Carol um, said, when you are creative with your own clothing choices, it gives others permission to be creative with theirs. And I thought mm. that was like, like I a need to like, uh, yes, yeah, love yeah. that. Like, what a wonderful idea, and it's yeah. so true. You know, mm-hmm. like it's almost like encouraging others just by way of what you're wearing. To and now, I guess maybe we're getting a bit off the topic of outfit repeating, but like, <laughs> or maybe maybe when you repeat your outfits, it gives permission to other people to repeat their outfits too. So I guess it's like all one giant thing. But I just thought that sentiment was so beautiful I think it brings it back to the essence of that outfit repeating right like whether it be the exact same outfit every single time or a version of that it you're yeah you're giving yourself the permission to take that opportunity to get dressed to inspire yourself and potentially others yeah 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 Yeah, and to wear your wardrobe I feel like that's also outfit repeating like wearing what your Wearing your wardrobe, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. We love Great. it. Yeah, that's going to be it for today. I hope uh, we all hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, let us know if you have any secret tricks to not get bored with uh, outfit repeating. Thank you so much for joining in our conversation this week. If you're enjoying the show, we'd love it if you subscribe to the podcast on Spotify and Apple and leave us a rating and review. It's one of the best ways to support the Sustain This podcast at zero cost to you. We're also a community-led podcast. So if you have any questions for us, topic requests, or even guests you want to hear from, please send us a DM on Instagram at sustain this underscore podcast. We read all of our comments and look forward to hearing from you. We hope you join us again next Tuesday where we'll talk about so much more than clothes. Ciao!